unprecedented battle between Sunak and the Scottish First Minister of My Digest next. Then at 10.20, women's rights activist and Olympic medalist Sharon Davies gives her verdict. After the Sussexes reject Jeremy Clarkson's apology for his controversial Meghan column, do you believe they really want to make peace with their enemies, including the royal family? I'll get your verdict in The Clash at 9.20. Plus, is woke ITV about to follow Amazon by throwing Clarkson under the bus? Fleet Street icon Calvin McKenzie analyzes at 10.45. And as the despotic regime of Iran uses Harry's Taliban revelation to help justify the execution of a British Iranian, Will this convince the prince that his kill count revelation was irresponsible? Top US journalist Megan Kelly here on that from stateside at 9.50. Plus, Harry's oversharing has made his late mother fair game for ridicule. How would he react if it was Clarkson rather than the liberal US media making jokes like this? My poor little prince, put this cream on your willy. It will lessen the ache and make it less chilly. So I'll bring you that in full. And as Elon Musk shares his concern of a global takeover by the elite, I'm asking, should we fear the World Economic Forum? All that coming up in the media buzz at 10.30 with my superstar panel, Amanda Platel, Matt Letizia, and Rebecca Reed. Plus, in one of the most embarrassing moments in their century on air, the BBC and its top paid star Gary Lineker were tonight targeted by saboteurs whose X-rated prank played out live to the nation. We've an FA Cup winners only policy in the studio tonight. And I don't know who's making that noise, but so Alan Shearer is on the commentary gantry. So what's going on there? Well, Lawrence Fox is going to break down that B blunder and more of the woke week in the Fox Report at 9.35. Tomorrow's newspapers and Greatest British Union Jackass coming up too. This is Dan Wooten tonight. Let's go. So who wanted to sabotage Lineker and the BBC? <laughs> I mean, the list is endless. So we'll discuss, be discussing that very shortly. But before all of that, uh, the news headlines with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you and good evening to you. February is likely to be a month of disruption to public services as schools, universities, the rail network, nurses and civil servants all plan industrial action. Train drivers with the RMT and ASLEF unions will be striking on the 1st and 3rd of February in a long-running dispute over jobs, pay and conditions. The action coincides with 100,000 civil servants walking off their job and 70,000 university staff from the University and College Union will stage the first of their 18 days of industrial action. Plus, teachers from the National Education Union will strike for seven days in February and March in their dispute over pay. In other news today, the Home Secretary says the independent inquiry looking into the police officer who murdered Sarah Everard will also consider the crimes of former Met Police Officer David Carrick. The Home Office has launched a review of police standards to make sure officers who are not fit to serve the public can be sacked. That's after the former Met Police officer pleaded guilty to 49 offences, including dozens of rapes over an 18-year period. He's been sacked by the force at a misconduct hearing held in his absence today. And the Scottish Secretary has defended the UK government's move to block Holyrood's controversial gender bill reforms. It's the first time Westminster has made an order under the Scotland Act to prevent a law from Scottish Parliament going to royal assent. Alistair Jack says the reasoning behind the move is that Holyrood's gender bill would undermine equality laws in the rest of the UK. The bill would have serious adverse effects on the operation of the Equality Act 2010. And as I've set out in my correspondence with the First Minister yesterday, I would prefer not to be in this situation. The United Kingdom government does all we can to respect the devolution settlement and to resolve disputes. It is open to the Scottish Government to bring back an amended bill for reconsideration in the Scottish Parliament. 
The Foreign Secretary has justified the government's decision to arm Ukraine with British Army Challenger tanks in its war against Russia. James cleverly held talks in Washington today, including with the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken, before travelling to Toronto tomorrow to meet his Canadian counterpart. Cleverly will ask allies to go further and faster in their support for Ukraine. The Kremlin has downplayed the significance of the UK's move to supply more advanced weapons to aid the resistance. This is what they need to get the job done. This is what we're going to supply. And we're going to supply modern, heavy military equipment and the ammunition to allow them to defend themselves properly. And Putin should realise that his ambitions will not be realised. We will not let him realise his ambitions. Yeah. And this is why, and I keep repeating this, it's, 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 it's the best moral thing to do. To bring this. Entertainment news and Madonna has announced a worldwide tour to celebrate a career in music spanning more than four decades. The seven-time Grammy Award-winning uh, singer will put on a show in 35 cities across the world, including several in Europe, performing all of her greatest hits from the last 40 years. The celebration tour kicks off in July in Canada, stopping off at London's O2 Arena in October. Madonna has reportedly sold more than 300 million records globally, making her the best-selling female music artist of all time. That's it for me. I'm back in an hour. Now let's get back to Dan Wooden tonight. Now, as loyal viewers know, I have been critical of Rishi Sunak as a weak, woke globalist enforced on the Conservative Party against his will in an anti-democratic coup by wet Tory MPs. But I remain open-minded because the thought of a Labour, SNP, Lib Dem, Green coalition from hell driving the country into the ground, well, it keeps me up at night. So I'm heartened by the bravery and boldness shown by the Prime Minister staring down scheming Sturgeon and vetoing the sick Scottish gender recognition reform bill, which fails to protect women or children in the United Kingdom by allowing anyone to change gender and access female-only spaces aged 16 and over without a medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria, uh, including, by the way, convicted sex offenders. So as, as ever, uh, the Scottish First Minister... She's been completely disingenuous and almost entirely political in her response to the decision. This bill, passed by two-thirds of MSPs, remember, across all parties, doesn't give a trans person a single additional right that they didn't have before this bill. It simply it takes an existing process and makes it less inhumane, traumatising for trans people. So this is a UK government that sees an opportunity to stoke a culture war. I think wrongly, and I think they're very misguided and mistaken about that, but in doing so, undermining the Scottish Parliament, and we will defend it. There's so much to unpick there. Firstly, uh, the Equality and Human Rights Commission warned last year of the cross-border implications of the reform and its impact on the Equality Act. In September, they specifically said the operations of other provisions relating to sex discrimination across Great Britain will be affected by the proposed changes. So, so that's the law. The Westminster government is following it. But Sturgeon is fighting a media war, regardless of the legal reality, just like she did over her illegal second independence referendum plan, to try and appease her rabid base. But on the morality of this situation, it's Sturgeon who is the only one stoking a cultural war. She is prepared to throw women's rights under the bus in the name of advancing a hard left woke agenda that most trans folk never asked for. Uh, to understand the consequences of the SNP's bill, just listen to two female MPs. Now, they're from the left and the right of politics, Rosie Duffield of Labour and Rachel McLean of the Tories, making impassioned speeches that really touched me in the House of Commons today. I welcome the government's invoking of Section 35 in this case, as the bill clearly conflicts with the Equality Act and would have repercussions for women, for women across the UK. This bill seeks to allow anyone 
at all to, to legally self-identify as either sex and therefore enter all spaces, including those necessarily segregated by sex, such as domestic violence settings, changing rooms and prisons. There is a clear read across to the Equalities Act in our country. Having served in the Home Office and seen the desperate need for women and girls to be protected from grooming gangs, from predators, from sex offenders. Now, in pushing through such a flawed policy against the wishes of the Scottish people, we must remember, Sturgeon has ignored the rights and safety of both biological women and <coughs> confused youngsters, many of whom end up detransitioning if they begin their trans journey too young. So Sunak has shown political courage today. But there needs to be much more of it if he has any hope of surviving politically in the medium term. But to respond now, my superstar panel tonight, top Daily Mail columnist and broadcaster Amanda Platel, former England football legend and social commentator Matt Letizier, and the author and journalist Rebecca Reed. Amanda Platel, it was horrifying watching Rosie Duffield, a campaigner for women's rights, being heckled there by the hard left loons in the SNP. Yeah, it was horrible. Although I, I did have to chuckle when you're talking about Rishi being brave and courageous. <laughs> it's just a cheap political stunt. I'm sorry, Dan, OK? Can I slightly unpick this for you? Please. Having worked in these um, forums mm -hmm. before, what happens when you're Rishi and you're behind 20 points in the poll, looking forward to annihilation at the next election? He sits around, he gets his pollster in, he gets his, um, his uh, uh, adv every advisor in every single sector. What can I do to get a bit of momentum? But it can't cost anything. And the thing about this policy is it doesn't cost anything. It's not like giving the nurses money. It's not like giving the teachers money. This is cost free. So you it's... don't believe that he really cares I do about not believe for rights. a sec. I do not believe for a second he's got no history of it. I think it's just a purely cynical stunt to try and get himself to get what they call, um, you know, a cynical um, eye-catching headline. Mm. And the thing is that this... But exactly the same thing is happening with that overstuffed little haggis, because <laughs> if an... <laughs> what could you mean? <laughs> if an election were called in Scotland tomorrow, she would lose 25 MPs because of the Labour resurgence. She's, she's going for the 16-year-old young woke vote, and what Rishi's doing is going for the older vote that he will lose in the next election if he doesn't give them but something. But morally, this is the right decision. Though. Oh, morally, it's absolutely the right thing. To, uh, I support it 100,000%. I don't want blokes in my changing rooms. Oh, well, that's not always true, but um, <laughs> I, I, I want to choose the men who are in my... In... Goodness gracious me, she started early tonight. <gasps> I'm so Reed. hot in this jumper. <laughs> Amanda, so hot what, did you, oh. what did I say? I'm you boiling jumper, over. You complain about the jumper. We had this conversation. <laughs> Uh, Re I Rebecca Reid, um, <gasps> this is a difficult one for you, isn't it? Because here you are on the left, mm. but you're also a feminist. Yeah, I, I, it is complicated. I feel very at ease with saying that I think that 16 is too young to make any major decision. I don't think you should want to get married at 16, which is changing. Therefore, I think being able to transition earlier medically is illogical. I would say that being able to live in the gender that is correct for you at any time is, is the right thing. Um, what, what frustrates me here is that it's the merging of two different issues, a quite dry, quite confusing legislative issue about how Scotland and England work together, and then the incredibly inflammatory hot-button topic of trans rights. And they're getting mixed up and therefore we're having a fairly unproductive conversation, not us, obviously, the media in general, is having quite an unproductive conversation about both. And ultimately, I think what's frustrating is when you see people, and I don't include Rosie Duffield in this, but there are other people who don't have any real deep care about women's rights. They just don't like trans people and they don't like Scotland. And this is a great day for them to be able to have... Do you think they way. really don't like trans women? I think there are definitely people who don't like trans women. And also, I think there's a real problem when we conflate the possibility that some cis men might try to access spaces. This is my... The, this is the problem, is that those aren't, those aren't trans women. Those are, those are men. Yeah. Those aren't... Uh, trans well, of women course. Aren't... Which is why we can't keep butchering the English language, Matt Letizia. No, that, I, I think... I think and this let's is a... forget cis men. We're just men. We're just blokes. But it's, if we're, we're having a conversation about trans issues, we do have to use the word trans and cis in order to be clear what we're talking about. Hmm. That's just... Well, I'd say you, could do, you could I say a say man and you could say would... a trans man. That's what I would argue. Okay. I mean, if I describe myself as a bloke, I think most people will understand that and they don't need me to say I'm cis. 
surely. But you're not cis, are you? But if I hadn't met you before, is I don't know. Is he cis or isn't he cis? No, he is cis. Yes, he is cis. Oh, 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 so this is when you were assigned I don't believe in these terms. I don't oh, okay. believe in the okay, vast so, majority of people but, having to change the way that we describe ourselves because of a small majority. You can say men exactly. and trans men. Fine. I'm OK with that. Uh, I think this thing that she's trying to introduce um, has to be looked at through the lens of how could it be abused? How, mm. could, how could that be abused? And it's very easy for, it would be very easy under that legislation for perverts all over the country mm. to completely abuse this, this thing. And I, I'm not comfortable with it. And prisoners. And I'm not comfortable. Absolutely, prisoners. Sex offenders. And Prisons are more of a concern I'm, because I think it's possible that people it, would try to. Just, but if you free the law up, then it's free for prisoners to, if, you, if, you, if this came through, it would be much easier for a man to say, actually, I don't like hanging, I want to go into the, into the lippy um, part of the prison and have an easier time, yeah, and, and no bit. one can contest it. Yeah. But if you, no if, one... you haven't, if you have no previous track record of living as a woman, then there should be a conversation about whether we have third spaces where all trans women are in prison together, though it's been a very bonkers. small third space. Why should this we be spending bonkers, money on... This is absolutely... If they're, okay, if they're men, okay, they should be in the men's if you, OK, if you had somebody who was trans, who, was f who had had full surgery, therefore had a vagina, and was part full. You don't have a vagina a with full surgery. You wouldn't, but who'd have Sorry. Full, who'd have you don't full have surgery. a vagina. I said full surgery. You can't. You can't make. You can't make a vagina. You can make a vagina. You cannot. You can make a vagina that you can have sex with. And what I'm asking is, if you would you realistically put a person who has a vagina in a men's prison? No, but that's not what we're talking about. Because when they were about. born, they that's were not what we're talking about. That person would already have transitioned. Yeah. Would already have had a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, and under the current law, have lived in their new gender yeah. for two years. Okay. What we're talking about under this irresponsible and sick law from Nicola Sturgeon is someone who is already in prison, possibly for rape, so a rapist in prison being able to overnight say, I am now a woman and yeah. demand to be transferred to a female prison. This is what Sturgeon wants and it is sick and it is wrong and we have to start talking about it. But I think what most people would say, generally speaking, is if you live your life as a woman already, you should be treated as a woman when you go to prison. And I think the difficulty is when we have this conversation... But that's conversation, not what we're talking about. That's I, not that's what this bill argument. is about. That's and that's what Matt's saying. Argument. It's about the consequences of this bill. And I think the thing for me as well is that the Scottish people didn't vote for this. No. They don't want it. This is the, just the Scottish Two thirds MPs. of the Scottish people aren't keen on this And I heard Nicola Sturgeon say... Oh, the if, young if, people will be. If they, if Who if she they wants. veto this... Nicola Sturgeon said if they veto this one, then... Yeah. They'll start doing everything. Yeah. Well, they haven't done that. Do, do you know what the saddest thing yeah. for me was watching um, the trans commentator Debbie Hayton on Lawrence Fox's GP News show last night, and she said, we never asked for this. Sturgeon has made us people. a political football. She has thrust us into the public spotlight when we were just trying to go about and live our lives and shame on Sturgeon it's for that not, final word, Rebecca. To be fair, it's not just... We talk about this all the time, all of us. With less than half a percent of people in the UK are trans. They want to be left alone to quietly and privately live their lives with dignity and not be used as a political football. Mm. And that is being done by all sides of the debate. And no, 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 we're not trying to change the law. Well said. It, it comes from all quarters. It does. Well, I totally disagree with it's that. It's a conversation because that's had... The law is already there to protect trans people and allow them to transition with dignity while also protecting women's only spaces. And the problem that I have with what Sturgeon is doing is that it is all political. People on both sides of the debate get asked in interviews as a constant gotcha, what's a woman? Who has a cervix? Can men have penises? Do women have cervixes? Mm. But those are constantly yeah, and asked I think they're very important. all the time. I think they're very using, important that's using trans questions people for our as a politicians to, play to with. answer. That's using trans people as a political football to try and score points. Well, I would argue that it's Sturgeon who is doing that, but look, we'll beg to differ. Rebecca <laughs> Reed, Matt Letizio, Amanda Platow, my superstar panel, are with us all night. But coming up, one of the most embarrassing moments in the BBC's history occurred tonight live on air as their MVP, not mine, Gary Lineker, fell victim to X-rated saboteurs. Now, our very own Lawrence Fox has been investigating this. He's going to break it down and more of the PC week in the Fox Report at 9.35. But first, after the Sussexes reject Jeremy Clarkson's apology for his controversial Meghan column, do you believe they really want to make peace with their enemies, including the royal family? Top royal biographer Ingrid Seward, broadcaster and decur and businesswoman Bushra Sheikh do battle next. And as ever, I want to hear from you on the stand at gpnews.uk. Vote in our poll at GP News. The results and the clash straight after the break.
Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deems & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there from 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6 p.m. on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week. It's time for The Clash. And like an irritating itch that just won't go away, the Duke of Sussex has given yet another interview, this time sitting down with his so-called archenemy, the British press. That's right, speaking to Bryony Gordon from the Daily Telegraph, another of his journo BFFs, Harry continued to burn bridges with his family, making this audacious demand of the Prince of Wales. He said, I'm willing to forgive you for everything you've done and I wish you'd actually sat down with me properly and instead of saying I'm delusional and paranoid, actually sit down and have a proper conversation about this. Because what I'd really like is some accountability and an apology to my wife. Hmm. Yesterday, Clarkson, Jeremy Clarkson, gave a lengthy apology to his wife, Megan, for a controversial column about her in December. He also took accountability for his actions, and this is how the Sussexes repaid the favour. They said, what remains to be addressed is his long-standing pattern of writing articles that spread hate, rhetoric, dangerous conspiracy theories and misogyny. Unless each of his other pieces were also written in a hurry, as he states, it is clear this is not an isolated incident shared in haste, but rather a series of articles shared in hate. 
So the apology was thrown straight back into Clarkson's face in a statement intended to ruin and destroy the man. All this talk about reconciliation is nothing but a facade because what this pair are really motivated by is revenge. Tell me if I'm wrong. Do you believe the Sussexes really want to make peace with their enemies, including the royal family, down at gbnews.uk? Vote in our poll at GB News. But to debate this now, I'm joined by the royal biographer and editor-in-chief of Majesty magazine, Ingrid Seward, former Apprentice star, Bush was Sheikh, and broadcaster, Narinda Kerr. So, Ingrid Seward, if you were the royal family right now, surely you would be looking at the way the Sussexes responded to the Clarkson apology and thinking, hang on a moment, this probably isn't a very good idea, apologising and taking accountability uh, for doing nothing, because actually we're just going to get a whole torrent of abuse back from Harry and Meghan anyway. Nothing satisfies them, Ingrid. No, you're right, nothing satisfies them. But I don't think for one moment... The royal family are much too grand to compare themselves to Jeremy Clarkson and his kind of apology. But I think what they're saying is, what are we apologising for? For giving Harry and Meghan the most wonderful wedding ever experienced, I think, at Windsor Castle, certainly within living memory, for giving them money, for helping them when they moved to California, for looking after them for trying to make life really smooth for them and bending to their will on every occasion. What are they apologising for? I know that's what the king must be saying to himself. What am I meant to be apologising for? Um, and why should I apologise to Meghan, who's done nothing but trash my, my family and, and the monarchy? I think that's a great point, Ingrid. I mean, Narinda Kerr... Look at how they reacted to the Clarkson apology. Not only did they not accept the apology, Narinda, they've actually now launched an international campaign to try and get the guy completely cancelled. And that's starting to happen. Amazon and now it looks like ITV might do that. So personally, Narinda, and you're not going to like this, Clarkson should never have apologised. Good God damn. The man is a legitimised and celebrated misogynistic bully. They, they didn't have to accept his apology. His apology was a weak attempt well, Narenda, to I'm save just, his Narenda, life. Narenda, hold up one second. Career. Hold up one second, because I'm going to bring some facts into this. The only person out of the two people who you are mentioning that has been accused multiple times of bullying and was subjected to a Buckingham Palace investigation was Meghan Markle. Show me any evidence that Jeremy Clarkson has ever bullied anyone. Uh, he attacked a colleague and he was sacked. He has made repeated offences. The man is nearly a pensioner and he repeatedly is disgusting, vile and made a sexually violent speech about Meghan Markle. This Which isn't I don't just agree an attack with, on Meghan Markle. This is an attack on all women. That man should never be given a platform. This isn't cancelling. That man should never have been given work. We need to get rid of him because he's dangerous. Dan, you can't say the same okay, so you, But it is cancelling when you want to cancel women, him. And Jeremy Clarkson is an attack on women. He is vile. Okay, okay, but can I just clarify? You do want to cancel him. I think I, he should never have a platform. He yeah, is so you disgusting. want to cancel him? OK, uh, you want to... Made, well, what do you think? That a sexually violent hate Look, article... OK, well, you've asked me platform. the question, Narinda, so let me respond. I'll tell you what I think. Do I agree with Clarkson's column? Absolutely not. Would I have written it myself? Absolutely not. Do I think it has been completely taken out of context? Yes. He was making a reference to a fictitious scene in Game of Thrones. He should have explained that. It but It was has a been hate crime. He should have been arrested, in fact. He should be fired and never been given a platform Arrested again. for this what? This man is a serial offender. Arrested this for what? The By the Thought Police. Sorry? Arrested for what, Narinda? Hate speech. He's incited hate against women. The man is dangerous. Bushra, do you want to respond He's to that? Quiet. Narinda, let, uh, let how Bushra about, respond. How about, how about we calm down? I, we, we, we're going to use this word misogynistic. Everyone wants to use this word misogynistic. Do we really know what it means? Come on, give the guy a break. Let's stop character assassination 
We are talking about Meghan Markle. She has main character syndrome. She's an American, coming to Great Britain and wants to take over. Harry needs to grow a pair. He needs but to grow a pair. You sound, he needs to stop. You sound he needs to awful. stop. You no, are no, 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 no. A, a misogynist. He is hating towards all women. And oh, he's not. As a no, woman he's not hating. He's not someone. hating to all women. No, no, no. Problem. You no, are part stop. of the problem. Narinda, Narinda, stop taking it from one extreme to another. He did not attack all women. Do I agree with what he said? <laughs> No. Cancel That's culture. It. Let's don't. leave that out. No, let's stop at cancel culture. We do have he free speech fact, here. He wanted it naked. OK, and okay Narinda, Narinda, you've had speech. your say loud and clear. I want to bring Ingrid back in. Ingrid, look, I don't think we have to agree with what Jeremy Clarkson said. He's admitted himself he made a huge mistake in writing that column, Ingrid. But don't you think it's quite sinister and chilling? that we have big companies like Amazon and ITV seemingly cancelling folk on the behest of two privileged members of the royal family or former members of the royal family and Harry and Meghan. I do find that quite chilling because it makes it it makes you feel though you, you cannot say anything about any anyone that might be taken as being slightly derogatory by no. someone whatever you say whatever we say tonight however nice it might be someone might be offended and then you'll never be on air again no i am not a fan of what clarkson wrote but people read him because he is so rude. I'm not saying he's misogynist, he's just rude. And that's why people like him and that's why people read his column. Maybe he won't have a column anymore, we don't know. But I don't think, I don't like this cancel thing just because you've upset somebody else. I'm not just the Sussexes. I think that people should be, I, I'm really pro free speech. You don't have to be unkind in what you say to get your point across. And it's but he wasn't kind of it. He wasn't kind of screaming at each other that things go wrong. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? And this is my final word on the matter, Narinda. If you go down this path, very soon you'll be finding that it's you who is cancelled. Narinda, you don't cancel views that you find offensive or that you disagree with, because otherwise Dan, we are heading to, the to world. tyranny. Dan, welcome to a world where what you say has consequences. And no matter how rich or famous you are, you will be fired okay. because we do not accept that world. Narendra Kerr, the arch proponent for cancel culture. Thank you so much. Alongside her, the editor-in-chief of Majesty magazine, Ingrid Seward, and the former apprentice star, Bushra Sheikh. But who do you agree with? Do you believe these claims that the Sussexes just want accountability from their enemies, including the royal family? Well, Liam on Twitter says, no, they do not. The Sussexes' policy is destroy and destruct. And this latest episode is plain proof of that. Oh, my goodness, Liam, you took the words right out of my mouth. Couldn't agree more. Uh, from Eden. After their ungracious reaction to Clarkson, I doubt they will ever receive another apology. I hope that's the case. I'll certainly never be apologising to them. And from Sean, Harry and Meghan, a typical cancel culture, wokes that could cause bother in an empty room. They have few friends, but are keeping their enemies closer to stir things up. And your verdict is now in, well, this one is our most overwhelming poll in some time. Just 5% of you agree that the Sussexes just want accountability. 95% of you say otherwise. Coming up, as the despotic regime of Iran uses Harry's Taliban revelation to help justify the execution of a British Iranian, will the prince finally be convinced that his kill count revelation was irresponsible? We've got top US journalist Megyn Kelly beaming over from the States on this at 9.50. But first, an X-rated blunder has brought shame to the BBC and Gary Lineker. And I take no pleasure in that whatsoever. Lawrence Fox explains what went down live on air tonight and why they'll finally come to cart Greta Thunberg away. That's in the Fox Report straight after the break. <laughs> We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online across England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. 
Monday to Thursday, 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. Join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9 p.m. till 11 p.m. on GB News. The People's Channel. Britain's news channel. My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30 Monday to Friday on GB News. Every morning from 6 o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> whether you're with us on TV, radio or online, every morning it's breakfast from 6am. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. Join me, Nana Akue, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fungary debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> on it today! I, 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 I... Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank and, of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4pm on GB News, the People's Channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Time now for the Fox Report with Lawrence Fox. And the BBC suffered a hugely embarrassing gaffe tonight when its primetime FA Cup football coverage was sabotaged with X-rated noises. So this cringeworthy broadcast went out to BBC One viewers before the watershed just hours ago, with Beeb staff clueless as to where it was coming from. Now, shortly, uh, we've an FA Cup winners-only policy in the studio tonight. Uh, no, I don't know who's making that noise, but so Alan Shearer is on the commentary gantry alongside um, Steve Bauer. Um, Alan, um, it's toasty in this studio. It's a bit noisy as well. I don't know if somebody's sending something on someone's phone. I think it's, it's a joke. I don't know whether you heard it at home, but um, uh, how's it on the gantry? A bit chilly? Yeah, it's, um, it's very cold. My ears are cold, so yours will be freezing up <laughs> here, Gary. <laughs> uh, what, what do you see in this game tonight, Alan? How do you see it going? Well, Wolves will feel very hard done by because they felt they scored a legitimate goal and they should have been... What the hell are they exposing young football fans to? Now, those noises continued for over 10 minutes until they eventually found the culprit. According to Lineker, a mobile phone secretly taped to the BBC studio set. He said, well, we found this tape to the back of the set. As sabotage goes, it was quite amusing. Uh, now, tonight, a well-known football online prankster called Javo has claimed responsibility... Uh, obviously, we don't know if it's him. It seems to me, Lawrence, uh, that the BBC have some folk in-house uh, who they should be very concerned about. Are you trying to suggest there's a rat in the camp of the BBC? Numerous Dan. rats, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what my favourite part of it is? Usually, I really dis 
I, I find liking Gary Lineker a very difficult mm. thing, but I think he dealt with it quite well. But it's the utter personality-lessness of uh, Alan Shearer, which, like, he's just going, I'm still going to carry on going, I don't care what's going on. But, um, yeah, I mean, someone in the BBC, I think, is probably turning around and going, this is our protest. It's just, it's such a sort of myopic, monochromatic bore fest that um, I'm grateful that we exist. Yeah, very true. But I think they will have to conduct some sort of serious investigation into this because the point is someone within the BBC allowed that phone to be planted on that set. So oh, someone was trying to humiliate Lineker and uh, the BBC. Who would there. want to humiliate Gary Lineker? I, I just want to be kind I to know. him. It wasn't me, I promise. <laughs> uh, now, look, I've got to talk about this, this damning example of woke civil of the woke civil service doing its best to scupper the interest of the, company, of the country. So this was Lawrence Home Office staff being warned to be careful about colleagues' pronouns and to even avoid using the word mate. So workers at the department's Homeland Security Group, uh, they are meant to be responsible for tackling terrorism, were given the orders during a presentation on addressing people's gender identity. Staff were told using the word homosexual was a medical phrase and could reduce colleagues to purely sexual terms. It also warned some staff that they might want to use neo-pronouns, such as Z or A. The Home Office said the material which was leaked to the Guido Fawkes website was used as part of an internal event in the department. It was not an official policy. But, Lawrence, this shows you, doesn't it, about the woke indoctrination of folk in our civil service, who, let's be honest, should be doing all they can at the moment to stop terrorism and nothing more. It's pretty hard to get into your head the idea that before someone commits a terrorist attack, that they sit there and they go, are you ready, brother? Are you ready? And they're like, those aren't my pronouns, mate. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I'd like you to use my correct pronouns before I go and blow up an entire stadium full of people. It, it, this is, I mean, who is asking for this? Who wants this stuff in the world? Nobody I know talks in pronouns. Maybe that's because I'm now an old man and totally out of the way. But, you know, who cares? You're the terrorism squad. Deal with the terrorism squad. It's like the police yesterday with their, you know, bastard Dave. It's like, stop dealing, policing people's tweets. Go and find the guy who's raped 24 women so mm. far and, you know, and has had nine appeals to the police. But you're far... Today, actually, I'll tell you this. This is a bit of an exclusive for you. Today, we wrote a letter to the police complaining about um, the way that they behaved. And then we reported ourselves to the police for writing the letter. And the police got back to us within 40 minutes, which is quicker than you get an ambulance nowadays. Yeah, that's mad, isn't it? Uh, look, Lawrence, I did celebrate today, though, because that uh, annoying little rabble-rouser, Greta Thunberg, uh, arrested for the second time in two days. This was in Germany. Watch. You are my love. You are my love. Is she just shouting into the literal wind at this point, Lawrence? She should have been put in social care, shouldn't she, when she was younger? Because she's been groomed by her parents. And manipulated by those yeah. fame-hungry parents. And it's just sad now because, you know, her white privilege means you can pick her up and drag her off the beach. Mm. And she's sort of... She's she's not worth anything to, to the cause anymore. Now she's an adult and not an, an unattackable, autistic Norwegian kid. Funny how she always manages to... Uh... Travel around, isn't it? Uh, here, she sailed there. Here, there Don't. and everywhere. She sailed there. Oh, yeah. Uh, she walked or sailed. Love to see proof of that. Uh, Lawrence Fox, thank you so much. And Lawrence, you're back 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Oh. Thank you, Lawrence. Now, coming up, as over 1,000 Met officers and staff were investigated for sexual and domestic abuse claims following the revelations about serial rapist ex-copper David Carrick, can we trust the British police? And will this be the start of a misguided movement to defund the Met? Well, tonight's superstar panellists, uh, one of them, thinks we should defund the Met. And I'll explain why in the media buzz after 10. We'll have tomorrow's front pages are being unveiled then too. But first, as the despotic regime of Iran uses Harry's Taliban revelation to help justify the execution of a British Iranian, 
Will this convince the prince that his kill count revelation was deeply irresponsible? Megan Kelly joins me on this live stateside straight after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deebs & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hello, I'm Michelle Jubri, and you can join me every weekday, 6 till 7 on Jubes & Co. Me and my panel will get stuck right into the day's events. And I can tell you, in fact, I can warn you, expect some robust debates some strong opinions and perspectives from both sides of the fence. It's about you at home as well. I love to read out all of your comments, or at least as many as I can. So join me, Michelle Jubri, Monday to Friday, 6 till 7 on Jubes & Co. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, for your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. I'm Mark White. As GB News Home and Security Editor, I cover those key issues that are so important to you. Our authorities, our communities doing all they can to combat violent crime. With the public services under unbearable strain, why are we still failing to control our borders? Defence, the first priority of any government, has been continually hollowed out. Can we trust our politicians to protect the armed forces? Join me, Mark White, on GB News. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me in the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the people's channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the people's news channel. My name is Andrew Doyle. Join me every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for Free Speech Nation. This is a show where we address current affairs and news stories of the week with the help of two wonderful comedian panelists. I brought in comics because I want to give it a lighter edge and also they work for less. See you there. Megan Kelly time now, and it seems warnings from military leaders regarding the potential harm caused by Prince Harry's reckless claims about his time in Afghanistan could be coming to pass. In the heat and fog of combat, I didn't think of those 25 as people. You can't kill people if you think of them as people. You can't really harm people if you think of them as people. They were chess pieces removed from the board. So that's Harry in his autobiography, and now the despotic Iranian regime has used those revelations to justify the contemptible execution of a British Iranian, Ali Reza Akbari, who had been detained since 2009 on suspicion of spying. In a really shocking and terrible tweet today, the Iranian foreign ministry said the British regime, whose royal family member sees the killing of 25 innocent people as removal of chess pieces and has no regrets over the issue, and those who turn a blind eye to this war crime are in no position to preach others on human rights. Now, Megan, look, obviously, uh, I condemn this killing and uh, the way the Iranian regime has tried to invoke Harry is shameful. But 
Is this why the Duke of Sussex really does need to accept that his Taliban kill count revelation was highly irresponsible? Because you'll remember, Meghan, when he went on the Stephen Colbert show, he said, oh, it's nothing to do with the revelation that's irresponsible. It's just the way that the British press have reported on it that is irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no question, first of all, that Iran is a terrible regime, and they probably would have done this without any comments by Prince Harry. They're executing gay people just for being gay. All right, so yeah. that's who we're dealing with here. Um, however, there's no also no question that Harry's handed them a talking point. He's handed this disgusting regime a talking point. And it's already being used, not just by Iran, but do a Google search. Half the Taliban has weighed in on this. You got articles in the British press talking about the Taliban saying, oh, I'm sick of Prince Harry and my Facebook feed and all of his comments about killing the Taliban members over here in Afghanistan. I mean, like, when you've caused that to happen, you've misstepped. And what Harry doesn't realize is, again, that he's a public figure. That's That means people can say negative things about you, so stop complaining about your press. But it also means that you may have a heightened responsibility when it comes to your rhetoric. And you should be careful about what you say when you are in a role like the one he has, because people can get hurt and tempers can flare. And you actually do have the power through no accomplishment of your own, just through birthright, uh, to actually influence international relations. And you should wield that power very carefully. And he didn't. And rather than just take the responsibility and say, I apologize, this was my intention. I see now it was poorly executed. He tried to blame the British press, again, who he blames for everything, Always. by saying, it's not my remarks, it's the spin on the remarks. They said I was boasting about 25 kills, and I wasn't. Well, if you look at what the Iranian regime used as their talking point, it, it wasn't even the 25. It was what he said about they're just chess pieces on the board. Nobody spun that. Harry said that. He said it irresponsibly, and it's now being used. And the smart move for him is just to take responsibility. But since you and I both know he never does that, he ain't it's not going to happen that. here. No, indeed. Now, look, close to you, uh, Megan, the Sussex is reportedly not welcome at uh, the weekend's BAFTA Tea Party and LA Awards season highlight. That was on account, apparently, of Prince William being president of the organisation. But that said, the, the, the couple's influence in Hollywood uh, remains chillingly strong. So their last, latest arch nemesis, Jeremy Clarkson, had a real hell of a day yesterday. Amazon reportedly dropped his series, uh, Clarkson's Farm and the Ground, to a mere hours before Harry and Meghan slapped him down for his apology for that controversial column on the Duchess. Although, of course, this wasn't the first time they've publicly condemned the former Top Gear host. Just recently, which I know you know about, um, yeah, the Jeremy Clarkson article, so not only did what he said was horrific and is hurtful and cruel towards my wife, but it also encourages other people around the UK and around the world, men particularly, um, to go and think that it's acceptable to treat women that way. So, Megan, I'm fascinated to know what you think about this because my opinion is that Clarkson should never have apologised because they have simply used that apology to try and cancel him to finish his career forevermore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they may be succeeding uh, yeah. as he's apparently reportedly losing his TV deals, though hasn't been fired as a columnist yet. Um, I, I agree. Look, he's not like Prince Harry. He's a much smaller public figure. So he also has a, a responsibility to be careful in what he says in print, right? His column is not yep. like a comment on Twitter or a And I disagreed remark. with what he said in the column. Absolutely, of I did. I mean, Alyssa, let's not overstate it, though. It was a Game of Thrones reference. That's yeah. obviously it was what a joke. it was. It, it was a joke gone wrong. It was wrong. a joke. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I, I realize we're supposed to pr pretend that we're getting the vapors from his comments, but <laughs> most people aren't. Most people are like, okay, that was kind of rude, and they move on with their lives and don't want to see the guy's career destroyed because of it. Only these woke leftists who are trying to word police everybody over much smaller sins than this one uh, are the ones who pretend to be offended. Okay, so there's that. But can I just say this? What an opportunity... Megan and Harry missed by not accepting the guy's apology. Mm -hmm. They had a chance for once to look like the bigger people yeah. and they blew it.
They can't. They've got to take the dog's nose and rub it in the excrement because that's who they are. They want to see him suffer. You only sent the email to Harry. Well, the guy says he sent it to both of them. I don't know if he maybe just had Harry's email only, but he claims he addressed it to both of them. You have a long line of abuse against us. Well, if you look at his writings about Megan, he was actually on her side for a long time and then turned like most of us did after the Oprah thing and the why didn't anybody ask how I am thing in Africa. So he's had an evolution on her to which he's entitled, but they want him to apologize for being him, right? They want him canceled because he writes the way he really feels. And it's not always kind to her. I'm sure they'd love to see you canceled and me canceled. Oh, yeah. Well, guess what? It's oh, not going to yeah. happen. So anyway, oh, I don't yeah. know that his apology, apology could have saved him or otherwise, but I, it was being given to the wrong people because they are small. And well, indeed, no I, I think what you point out, though, that is so critical is that they have actually made a strategic error here. Because remember, you've got King Charles at Clarence House and Prince William at Kensington Palace watching all of this develop and thinking, how the hell do we deal with these two? We have lots of our advisors saying we've got to reconcile before the coronation. And they're now going to look at the way that they've treated the Clarkson apology and think, hang on a moment, actually, they could do the same thing to us. Yeah. Oh, you know, Dan, there's a saying, you teach people how to treat you. And the royal family, if they invite these two to the coronation, they will be teaching them that they can do whatever the heck they want. So honestly, if they do that and if they welcome this pair back into the royal family, they deserve what they get. They deserve. I, I'll have no sympathy for the royal family if Meghan and Harry go on criticizing them after this and use new information from new private meetings in the press. They deserve it. They must like it. If they're going to continue going on like this, I mean, how long can you look at them as abuse victims if they continue to welcome it into their lives? This is the point at which they need to draw the hard line and say it's done. This is effectively an abusive relationship, and we're done letting you do that to us. I couldn't agree more, actually. I couldn't agree more, and I'm pretty sure that's where uh, Prince William's head is at. Charles, he's a bit more on the fence because he fundamentally wants to believe that he's not going to be estranged from his son uh, for the rest of his life. But Meghan Kelly absolutely loved that host, of course, of the brilliant Meghan Kelly show, which you can find on Sirius XM YouTube and as a downloadable podcast. Megan, thank you. We will speak next week. But coming up, as Rishi Sunak stands up to Sturgeon over her dangerous gender bill, I'll welcome one of the most prominent voices on women's rights, former Olympian Sharon Davies, for her verdict at 10.20. But first, in tonight's Media Buzz, after the shocking conviction of Metropolitan Police Officer David Carrick this week, could this be used by woke critics to try and defund the Met? Our superstar panel have their say... One of them thinks the Met does need to be defunded, believe it or not, straight after the break. This year on GB News, we've got brand new members in the family. Join us across the entire United Kingdom. We cover the issues that matter to you. GB News will always stay honest balanced and fair. We want to hear whatever is on your mind. And we don't talk down to you. The establishment had their chance. Now we're here to represent you. Britain's watching. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel. Britain's news channel. Join me, Lawrence Fox, on GB News. Frank, fun, fearless, and sometimes serious, much as I love a Friday night punch up, what I really want is a battle of ideas. I want to look at things differently. I want to hear different voices and engage with your unique experiences. Every Friday at 7 p.m. on GB News. I'm Michael Portillo. Join me on GB News on a Sunday morning for topical discussion, debate, arts and culture, and sometimes even ethical dilemmas. I don't always agree with you, Michael. <laughs> Michael Portillo, Sundays on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At six, it's Deems & Co. Seven o'clock, Farage. At eight, join Mark Stein. And at nine, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. 
Freeview Channel 236. And you view Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. It's 10pm, I'm Dan Wooten. Tonight, Rishi Sunak finally displays the political courage he'll need to survive as he stares down scheming sturgeon and blocks Scotland's dangerous gender reform bill. Naturally, the Scottish First Minister jumped at the chance to use confused teens and vulnerable women as a political football. This is a UK government that sees an opportunity to stoke a culture war. I think wrongly and I think they're very misguided and mistaken about that. At 10.20, women's rights activist and Olympic medalist Sharon Davies analyzes a crucial victory in the gender wars and outlines what needs to happen next. Also coming up, are the woke bosses at ITV about to follow Amazon by cancelling Jeremy Clarkson at the behest of the Duke of Delusion Prince Harry and his vengeful wife Meghan? Fleet Street icon Calvin McKenzie scrutinizes their hypocritical war on the media. He's live with me at 10.45. Maybe the Sussexes should actually be keeping an eye closer to home on their Hollywood lovey pals because this is what Harry's unhinged tell-all has done to coverage of Diana in the liberal US media. My poor little prince, put this cream on your willy. It will lessen the ache and make it less chilly. So has Harry tarnished his mother's legacy by making her fair game for crass jokes like that? I'll get my panel's view in the media buzz. Tonight, I'm joined by Amanda Patel, Matt Letizier and Rebecca Reed. Plus, as serial rapist copper David Carrick sparks a Met review of historic sexual and domestic abuse claims against more than a thousand officers, can we still trust the police and will this be used by woke critics to try and defund the Met? We'll get stuck into that next. With globalist in chief Klaus Schwab opening the World Economic Forum in Davos by urging global elites to master the future, is the influential organization trying to be boss of the earth, as suggested today by Elon Musk? That's our big debate at 10.30. And the sad exodus of old white male legends at the BBC continues as Ken Bruce ditches Radio 2. This is Radio plays what it says it does, greatest hits. I love playing big tunes, big hits, lovely music. So it's the perfect place for me. I'll analyse that shortly. Plus, the BBC suffered a hugely embarrassing gaffe tonight as Gary Lineker's FA Cup broadcast was sabotaged by X-rated noises. We've an FA Cup winners only policy in the studio tonight. And I don't know who's making that noise, but so Alan Shearer is on the commentary gantry. Find out more about that humiliation for Lineker and the British Bashing Corporation when I crown tonight's Greatest Britain and Union Jackass at 10.50. We'll have tomorrow's newspapers on the way in just a moment as well. But first, the news headlines with Polly Middlehurst. Dan, thank you and good evening to you. February is likely to be a month of disruption to public services as schools, universities, the rail network, nurses and civil servants all plan industrial action. Train drivers with the RMT and ASLEF unions will be striking on the 1st and 3rd of February in a long-running dispute over jobs, pay and conditions. The action coincides with 100,000 civil servants walking out of their job and 70,000 university staff in the University and College Union will stage the first of 18 days of action during the month. Plus, teachers from the National Education Union will strike for seven days over February and March in their dispute over pay. Also in the news today, the Home Secretary says the independent inquiry looking into the police officer who murdered Sarah Everard will also consider the crimes of former Met Police officer David Carrick. The Home Office has launched a review of police standards to make sure officers who are not fit to serve the public can be sacked. That's after the former Met officer pleaded guilty to 49 offences, including dozens of rapes over an 18-year period. He's been sacked by the force at a misconduct hearing held in his absence today. 
Now, as you've been hearing, the Scottish Secretary has defended the UK government's move to block Holyrood's controversial gender bill reforms. That's the first time Westminster has made an order under the Scotland Act to prevent a law from Scottish Parliament going to royal assent. Alistair Jack says the reasoning behind the move was that Holyrood's gender bill would undermine existing equality laws in the rest of the UK. The bill would have serious adverse effects on the operation of the Equality Act 2010. And as I've set out in my correspondence with the First Minister yesterday, I prefer not to be in this situation. The United Kingdom government does all we can to respect the devolution settlement and to resolve disputes. It is open to the Scottish Government to bring back an amended bill for reconsideration in the Scottish Parliament. The UK and the United States have reaffirmed their support for Ukraine in its war against Russia. James Cleverly held talks in Washington today, including with the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken, before travelling on to Toronto tomorrow to meet his Canadian counterpart. Cleverly and Blinken said they remained committed to backing Ukraine for as long as it takes. The UK government has supplied Challenger 2 battle tanks to the war-torn country with hopes the US will also announce further assistance in the coming days. President Putin is due to make a big announcement tomorrow, we're told, on the Ukraine war. This is what they need to get the job done. This is what we're going to supply. And we're going to supply modern, heavy military equipment and the ammunition to allow them to defend themselves properly. And Putin should realise that his ambitions will not be realised. We will not let him realise his ambitions. Yeah. And this is why, and I keep repeating this, it's, 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 it's the best moral thing to do. Now, lastly, entertainment news and Madonna has announced a worldwide tour to celebrate a career in music spanning more than four decades. The seven-time Grammy Award-winning pop icon will put on shows in 35 cities across the world, including several in Europe, performing uh, for fans and giving them the chance to hear the songs they want. The celebration tour kicks off in July in Canada, stopping off at London's O2 Arena in October. Madonna has sold more than 300 million records globally, making her the best-selling female music artist of all time. That's it. You're up to date on TV, online and DAB Plus Radio. You're with GB News. Now we go back to Dan Wooden tonight. Tomorrow's news tonight now in our media buzz. Uh, front page is in, straight to the metro. It's one out, all out, as Britain prepares for the biggest day of strikes in a generation. Rail workers, university lecturers, teachers and civil servants all set to walk out in unison next month. The eye leads with a caution from Energy Minister Grant Shapps that energy firms must stop forcing customers onto prepay meters, with the regulator off gem due to be warned about the practice. The star leads with a Republican congressman accusing U.S. President Joe Biden of covering up sightings of UFOs. The headline, the truth is out there and there and there and there. Oh, I don't know if we can see it. Uh, there it is, finally. And on the front of The Guardian, calls for inquiry into officers who allowed rapists to stay in the Met. And we're going to get on to that now with my superstar panel, top Daily Mail columnist Amanda Patel, former England footballer and social commentator Matt Letizier, and the author and journalist Rebecca Reed. Now, as reported in The Guardian there, serially rapist David Carrick has been sacked by the Metropolitan Police after yesterday admitting dozens of sexual offences against 12 women while serving on the force between 2003 and 2020. Carrick's crimes were described as heinous, targeted and deliberate at his misconduct hearing today and it's triggered a Met review of nearly 2,000 sexual and domestic violence claims made against more than 1,000 officers in the past 10 years. Home Secretary Suala Braverman urged the embattled force to root out corruption but Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper warned the inadequate vetting process was damaging public confidence in police. I discussed this case yesterday with the Commissioner of the Metropolitan Police, Sir Mark Rowley, and I'm encouraged by the action that he has taken so far with his team to root out officers who are not fit to wear the badge. This government will not shy away from challenging the police to meet the standards we all expect of them. Her statement is very weak and it shows a serious lack of leadership 
on something that is so grave and affects confidence in policing. There are still no legal requirements on vetting. Forces can effectively do what they want. They don't even have to check employment history and character references. Now, Amanda Patel, this has personally shook your confidence in the police. It hasn't shaken it. It's destroyed it. I mean, literally, after even just listening to that, Dan, you know, the way they're talking about, why was he having an inquiry? The headlines today were saying that, you know, he's now been um, kicked out of the police force. Like, that's what we care about. We care the fact, about the fact he had a decade, more than a decade, of raping women, doing some of the things that we couldn't even run in our newspaper that was so despicable. Mm -hmm. and, and I just think coming so hot on, on the death of Sarah Everard, you know now I would not, if a policeman stopped me in the street if I was walking, I would run for my life. I'd run into the nearest um, pub. I would run into the nearest police station if there were any left. Um, but, and if a police car tried to stop me, I would refuse to allow to be stopped. I would keep driving, I would lock my door, I would phone someone, I would not be alone with a policeman ever again as far as I can see. And Shattered is what my faith is. And that is truly horrifying, Matt Letizia. Uh, but obviously the vast majority of police are a good folk. You, you would like to hope so. I mean, there's quite a big number uh, of people. I mean, that's, yeah. not a, that's not a small proportion, the, the amount that they're going to now be investigating. More than a thousand. Uh, I mean, that's... Yes. But, but there are over 35,000 Met Police. Offices. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, no, I appreciate yeah, but that. One in but, but one in 35 is not a great number. Um, and, I, and I think it, it, does, it does shatter your confidence in the, in the police when you have extreme cases like this. But we, we do have to also put that into context that there is, it is an extreme case. We're not saying that the other thousand cases that are going to be investigating are of this nature. Yeah, but come on, how many of those is, 34 it, other thousand cops protected this guy who knew... What, what was his name? What was he called? Very good he was called... How um, does he get Pastor away with Day. this? For such they a... knew he was a wrong yeah. man. How many of them, uh, you know, three women was it that went to the police and said, and, and accused him of something? Oh, no, and he said, and he just sit down and go, oh, no, they just made it up, you know. They'd... And there's a lot of so issues with the police disciplinary huge... process. There's so much around this, so yeah. much around this, apart from you there know, the are, heinous crimes. But what my fear is, is that will be used by this case will be used by the hard left uh, to push uh, this deranged campaign to defund the police. Uh, Rebecca Reid. Thank you for that charming introduction. <laughs> der deranged campaign. Um, it's not the hard left trying to parlay the abuse of women into defunding the police. It's people like me who grew up being told if you get lost, go find a police officer, who grew up respecting the concept of the police, who have reached a point of adulthood, and for me, it was the Sarah, Ever Sarah Everard case, where you realise that the police are actually statistically fairly likely not to be your friend. The But you do, to clarify, you do Yes, I do believe we should do fund the, the mess. So what would you so do? Would all, you... So my, my feeling is, but it is a very American concept, and I am fully willing Have to Have you seen that. how badly it's worked in America? I'm not saying they Have did it. Have you seen the crime? I wasn't in charge of the rollout in America. I probably won't be in charge of the rollout here, realistically. But what I'm saying is, I think that there is a place for a sort of emergency service that does the kind of riot control stuff where you break up a fight. And uh, if somebody's being... If, if, if there's an active shooter, that, that requires one very specific skill, right? That is not the same skill that sits down with a woman and says, is your husband hitting you? Who sits down with a child and says, are you being sexually abused? Obviously, they phrase it differently from that. It's not reasonable to expect the kind of person who can break up a fight to also be the kind of person who can uncover sexual abuse. Those are not the same skill. And what you are doing is taking a lot of people with not a very high level of education, putting them in incredibly highly traditionally masculine environments and then expecting them, because, for not much money, Rebecca, to be given I, I just, everything. I, I would only I challenge you on this because I've been involved in two specific um, stories in my career. One was um, child sex abuse. It's a completely separate organisation. It's totally separate, and they are highly skilled. But and the another was are. another was with um, with um, family abuse, you know, sexual abuse, and the abuse of women in homes. And these people—they're not the plods you see but on the street. But it has to be elevated to get to a specific team. Well, yes, the but there who, are specialists. Are working... You wouldn't want to get rid of those teams. No, because a lot have... of them so do I really still... good work. I fully believe there are still. Roles oh, so you for only detectives. want to fund parts of the police? I mean, look, yeah, this is a pipe nobody, dream. It is a fantasy. It is a delusion. Police. And and the moment that you. Have had some
some bl armed bloke in your house uh, with a knife, who is the first person you would want to call the police? And they wouldn't uh, turn up. They, I'd be on hold for half yeah, an hour. Exactly, and then right three days now, later, yes. they call me and be like, oh, so sorry. So we need a good police force. We need yes, a better which means police. defunding and starting but again. No, I, I disagree. Uh, defunding and then Final refunding. Word, defunding and then funding differently. So not expecting them to be social workers with truncheons, yep. expecting some people to be in charge of immediate crisis resource and other people being in charge of social work. But if you better fund social work, you have fewer people with mental health issues, fewer people with addiction issues... Just get rid of the fewer rapists. Crime. So what I and think... And get the yeah. cops to dob them in. Yeah. And so you, what I... Th oh, sorry, then. Sorry, final word. You didn't uh, talk uh, quickly well, enough. Well, no, I was, <laughs> I was just going to say, so we need, to, we need to rephrase these things, because when you say, I want to defund the police, if you just say that to somebody... That kind of implies that you want to get rid of the police altogether. Yeah. I you don't do. want to have a police force. She does. But you just I want do. to no, I, I want, I no, want to have a different she, version She's of making the police, a very hard lift, have extreme, a crazy, mm, fanatical would, would it be a police? I don't know. You'd call it something different and it would function differently. It would not but be it, the police as we currently have it. Yes, it's a completely okay. mad point. Uh, Rebecca, is just, Rebecca is just making it in a relatively <laughs> reasonable way. Now, the <laughs> British Fashion Corporation's war on old white men has claimed another season scalp with Ken Bruce. Bruce, becoming the latest broadcasting legend to ditch Radio 2 after landing a new show on Greatest Hits Radio. Greatest Hits Radio plays what it says it does, Greatest Hits. I love playing big tunes, big hits, lovely music, so it's the perfect place for me. Now, look, this was a shocking announcement today because Ken has been a fixture on BBC Radio 2 for more than 40 years and he follows in the footsteps of these veteran broadcasters, all of whom stepped away from the station in 2022 alone. So you've got Vanessa Fouts, who left after 19 years, Paul O'Grady after 14, Simon Mayo, who was axed after 21, and Steve Wright, also given the chop, after 23 years on our airwaves. Diversity-obsessed B bosses will be secretly delighted. Uh, they're going to be able to bring in some young non-white, non-male presenter, though I have to say their declining audience uh, will be less than pleased with the announcement. Rebecca Reed, Matt Letizia, Amanda Patel, do stand by because coming up, as Elon Musk sounds the alarm about a takeover of the elites, should we fear the World Economic Forum? That's our big debate in the media buzz at 10.30. But next, as Rishi Sunak finally displays political courage and blocks Sturgeon's dangerous gender reform bill, women's rights activist and Olympic medalist Sharon Davies analyses a crucial victory in the gender wars and outlines what needs to happen next. She's live straight after the break. Monday to Thursday nights on GB News. At 6, it's Deems & Co. 7 o'clock, Farage. At 8, join Mark Stein. And at 9, Dan Wooten tonight, followed by headliners. On TV, radio and online, this is GB News. Here on GB News Live, we'll be keeping you in the picture, finding out what's happening across the country and finding out why it matters to you. We'll have the facts fast with our team of reporters and specialist correspondents. Wherever it's happening, we'll be there. From 12 noon on TV, radio and online. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. We are GB News, the people's channel. Why not take us home with you by visiting the GB News shop at gbnews.store. You'll find all the official merchandise, a really good present actually for yourself, your friends or your family. We ship across the UK mainland at no extra cost. GB News, the people's channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness, me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints. We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. 
At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Join me every Sunday at 6pm for Gloria Meets. In exclusive interviews, I'll be finding out who our politicians really are and what they really think. It's something that you would never want anyone to suffer. I didn't know what channels there were. B, I didn't think I'd be believed. I must have weighed about seven stone and I'm five foot eight. My instincts was to sort of cover this up. I mean, clearly that was a mistake. Join me every Sunday at 6pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Britain's News Channel. Hello, I'm Simon Evans. Join me on GB News for Headliners at 11pm, where I'll be joined by two of the country's top comedians as we take a look at tomorrow's newspapers tonight. If it's a big story, we'll be covering it, I guarantee, but we'll also have some fun along the way. That's GB News Headliners at 11pm. We won't put you to sleep, unlike some of the other paper review shows out there. So join us, 11pm, seven nights a week. Welcome back. Rishi Sunak displayed timely political courage today as he stared down scheming Sturgeon by blocking her dangerous gender reform bill. The sick legislation would have endangered women and children across the country by allowing anyone, including sex offenders over the age of 16, to change gender and access female-only spaces from the age of 16 without a medical diagnosis of gender dysphoria. Speaking uh, through hysterical SNP cries of shame, Scotland Secretary Alistair Jack explained the bill would impact UK-wide law, including the 2010 Equality Act. It is our assessment that the bill would have a serious adverse impact, among other things, on the operation of the Equality Act 2010. Those adverse effects include impacts on the operation of single-sex clubs, associations, and schools and protections such as equal pay. The Government shares the concerns of many members of the public and civic society groups regarding the potential impact of the Bill on women and girls. The Bill also risks creating significant complications from having two different gender recognition regimes in the UK and allowing more fraudulent or bad faith applications. Naturally, Scotland's shameless First Minister jumped to the chance to play politics with vulnerable women and teens' lives. This is a UK government that sees an opportunity to stoke a culture war. I think wrongly, and I think they're very misguided and mistaken about that, but in doing so, undermining the Scottish Parliament, and we will defend it. But the only one stoking the culture war is her, because Sturgeon is all too ready to throw women's rights under the bus in the name of a hard-left, woke agenda that distracts from her own failings. I'm joined now by former Olympic swimmer and women's rights activist Sharon Davies. I mean, Sharon, uh, she talks about stoking a culture war. I would argue it is Sturgeon that is playing politics with the safety of biological women. Yeah, it's evening, Danny. Me, I'm Bridget and Studio. Nice to see you back again. Hope you had a lovely holiday. Um, Thank you, absolutely. lovely one. <laughs> absolutely. I think I think the cynic in me said that this was very much planned, though. Um, I mean, she knows very well that the GRR bill is in conflict with the Equality Act of 2010. She was told that when they were preparing this bill as well. Um, you know, and Section 35 was agreed on when devolution was agreed on. So, again, their lawyers would, would know all of these facts. So the only person that's really stoking this is, is that Miss Sturgeon. Um, to, to take something and... You know, reduce the age to 16, which I think is very, very risky, um, to turn around and, and go from two years to, <clears throat> to three months um, and literally just say that, you know, that someone that's a convicted um, paedophile can just self-identify and be put into a woman's prison is just extraordinary, really. The, the lack of consideration for, for women and children's safeguarding is extraordinary. And if you ask, you know, Scottish people, as, as you've already talked this evening, the polling says that they don't support this. So I just don't understand where she gets her mandate from because this is not what Scottish people want. And, and again, she's now also talking about going to the courts you know, and using up funding to do that that should be spent on other things. You know, they have big issues with the NHS up there. Where's, 
records than we do down here even, which are horrendous, um, education problems, and they have the worst death rate for, for drugs in the whole of Europe, four yeah. times the next country. You know, so money should be spent on other things in Scotland that desperately need it, other than stoking a war with Westminster. But your suspicion, Sharon, is that she's done this because it plays into her goal of trying to uh, keep her rabid base happy in terms of Scottish independence. You know, much easier to keep fighting against Westminster than having to deal with all of the problems that you've just outlined. Yeah, she talks about the consultation, and I can tell you for a fact that I travelled up to Holyrood with a friend, you know, a few friends of mine that were involved in elite sport. Um, to actually stand in front of, you know, the committee and talk to them about, about the effects that this would have on sportswomen. And she didn't listen to any of us. She didn't even invite us in. Yet she did invite two trans activist males to go in and to give their advice. You know, so we weren't even allowed to, to, to tell people what we knew, you know, based on peer-reviewed science, based on our personal experience. We weren't even given a voice. So she very much had an agenda when the whole thing was being prepared. It's like she uh, is a woman hater. It's just weird, isn't it? It is really strange. I don't, I don't understand it at all. You know, because there is room to look after everybody. Yes. You know, I, 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 you know, my my particular soapbox has always been sport, and I'm very happy that Michelle Donnellan, the culture secretary, just this last weekend has turned around and said, you know, yeah. that they are going to the government is going to ring fence female sport in this country. So for important. Competition. And that is re it's it's fantastic. It's so very very important. Um, I know, but the thing is, Sharon, that is great. That is great. And then she said backward. It's just so frustrating. <laughs> well, it is, because, because the thing is, Sharon, in so many ways now, women are under attack. There is a war on women. Now, people said I was paranoid, paranoid for example, when I called out uh, the woke organisers of the Brit Awards for making their main category gender neutral. Everyone said I was completely paranoid because Adele won the award last year. Well, guess what, Sharon? This year, not one female is nominated for Artist of the Year. And that's just one example. It feels like in so many aspects of society, sport, culture, entertainment, there is an attack on women. But what's so serious about what Sturgeon is doing is this is an attack on women's safety. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just definition of words as well. We're losing our ability to be able to explain things. You know, what is a woman? What is a transgender woman? What is living as a woman? You know, that's the other thing I find extremely difficult to... to someone please explain to me what living as a woman is. So you're going to live as a woman for three months. So that means leaving the house and calling yourself a, a girl's name and wearing a skirt and lipstick. Well, most days I don't wear makeup when I go out. I certainly I can't remember the last time I wore a skirt <laughs> and heels, you know, and I could be called Sam, couldn't I? So yeah. what's living as a woman? You know, I don't really understand that. That's no. why having a, a, a medical diagnosis for gender dysphoria is so very important. Exactly, and no one is wanting to take away the rights of genuine no. trans people, but it cannot come at a cost to the safety of biological women. But look, it is so important that you keep up this fight. This is very much at the detriment of, you know, genuine transgender people I know. who need our I know. and our support. And, and who never asked, by the way, to be dragged into this culture war by Sturgeon. They yeah. never asked for this. They never wanted it. But look, keep up the good fight because alongside J.K. Rowling, Sharon Davies has been the first high-profile woman who was really prepared to lose everything in order to raise public attention to what is going on. And we're going to keep the fight up with you, Sharon, this year. So thank you so thank much. You we'll speak that. very soon. But coming up in Uncancelled, as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex move to destroy his career, are woke bosses at ITV going to follow Amazon by cancelling Jeremy Clarkson? Fleet Street icon Calvin McKenzie gives his unfiltered take, and this is going to be an unmissable one tonight at 10.45. But next in the media bars, as Elon Musk shares his concern of a global takeover by the elite, I'm asking, should we fear the World Economic Forum? We'll debate that and deliver more of tomorrow's newspapers straight after the break. We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television, and online. 
across England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hi there, it's Stephen and Anne. At breakfast from 6am, you'll always be caught up with everything you need to know. The latest headlines, opinions and debates. We'll bring you the good news and the bad, but most of all, we're here for you. Remember, send in your views and let us know what you would like us to talk about. That's because we're your news channel. And every morning at 6am, it's breakfast on GB News. Monday to Thursday on GB News, it's Bev Turner today from 10 a.m. We're going to be here for you, our GB News family, to keep you up to date, but also make you smile. The guy went from puberty to adultery. <laughs> and I can't wait to bring a few of my own opinions. I have no time for cultural totalitarianism. <laughs> we'll engage in passionate, but always polite debate with your thoughts and opinions at the centre of it all. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Join me, Nana Akue, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fungary debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's <laughs> on it today! I, 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 I... Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank and, of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Join my show, Farage, 7 p.m. till 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday. And there you will get opinion, analysis, debate, and I'll cover stories that nobody else dares to touch. You've been cancelled. Join the club. Oh, my goodness me. And then for the last 15 minutes, talking pints We're over a drink. We have a civilised conversation with someone. We very often disagree, but we do it in a grown-up way. Come and join me on Farage. We are GB News, the people's channel. And right across the United Kingdom. You can find us on Sky Channel 512. Virgin Media Channel 604. Freesat Channel 216. Freeview Channel 236. And UView Channel 236. You can also take us with you on DAB Plus Radio. With the GB News app and at the website gbnews.uk. We're absolutely everywhere. Come join us on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Let's return to tomorrow's news tonight in our media buzz. More front pages in the Daily Mail report that Sadiq Khan and Suala Braverman are calling on authorities to strip serial rapist PC David Carrick of his police pension after he was convicted of dozens of sexual offences. The Daily Telegraph reports that Equalities Minister Kemi Badenoch will write to all Tory MPs over fears that a ban on trans conversion therapy will criminalise parents, with backlash against the proposals growing. Match of the Wahey is the headline in The Sun as Gary Lineker is humiliatingly drowned out by X-rated groans live on the BBC during coverage of Liverpool's FA Cup match against Wolves. The Mirror leads with agency staff being offered £40 an hour to break tomorrow's planned strike by nurses. My superstar panel back with me now, top daily mail columnist and broadcaster Amanda Patel, former England footballer and social media commentator Matt Letizier, and the author and journalist Rebecca Reid. Now, global elites have descended on Switzerland this week for the controversial World Economic Forum meeting in Davos. Prime ministers, mainstream media shills and corporate fat cats can be expected to debate everything from digital ID and vaccines to how we should all stop eating meat to save the planet. Uh, WEF founder Klaus Schwab welcomed delegates to Davos by urging them to, quote, master the future in a bizarre rallying cry. Watch. What does it need to master the future? I think to have a platform where all stakeholders of global society are engaged. Governments, business, civil society, the young generation, and I could go on. Twitter boss Elon Musk propelled criticism of Schwab and the WEF into the mainstream with this tweet today. He wrote, Master the future doesn't sound ominous at all, dot, dot, dot. How is WEF Davos even a thing? Are they trying to be boss of Earth? Well, yes, Elon, 
Yes, they are. For years now, the independent organisation founded by Schwab himself in 1971 has been accused of having far too much influence on global governments and political policies. What Schwab talking about grooming world leaders in the WEF's Young Global Leaders Programme and his boast about penetrating cabinets of governments? What we are very proud of now is the young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau and I know that half of this cabinet or even more half of, uh, half of this cabinet are for our uh, actually young global leaders of the world economy right. forum. So, Matt Letizia, is Elon Musk right to question the World Economic Forum and what's go going on in Davos? Uh, he's 100% right to question it. Um, I think he's, he's spot on the money. I, I think they are a group that does wield far too much um, influence in politics around the world. Um, they describe themselves a, you know, as an NGO, but they have, uh, as Klaus uh, rightly said there, they have penetrated the cabinets and they are infiltrating uh, policies of our country um, through the people that have uh, an association with them. Um, and I think it is something that we need to be incredibly concerned about. You think because it's Because he's dystopia. pretty much describing, in that first clip there, he's pretty much describing a one-world government. Mm. Which policies have they infiltrated? Which policies came from them? Uh, did you see what went on over the course of the pandemic the Not past really. two years? I mean, these well, are the ultimate they, proponents what, what was of lockdowns, it that came aren't from they? Them? Lockdowns? Mask well, wearing? Tony Blair's well, I hear that, speech. But I, I hear a lot of different people blamed for, for mask wearing and lockdowns. Do you, That's the first time I've heard that it's that. Do you think that? Uh, do you think that they have the best interests of the people of the world at heart? I think it's somebody else's work conference and I'm not there because I don't work there. Calvin is there, though, hilariously. Yes, so, he's um, from Calvin Robinson now. Calvin yeah. Robinson, we'll talk to him about this uh, next week. He's not one of the MSM shields, though. He's infiltrated this whole so thing. So it's, um, it's a big <laughs> MSM conference that's impenetrable, except Calvin's there. Well, you can travel to Davos, can't yeah. you? I mean, let's so see how it's trying to get in. They've got 5,000 troops surrounding the place yeah. so that the, the media can't get yeah. in. This is what annoys me about this kind of stuff. If they were actually open about these things, uh, and you're allowed to actually see what was going on, but they, they keep it behind closed doors. But the media and they, are and they, and they, and they, well, but the whole, no, no, it's very, it's very uh, selective. And the whole thing it's, is terrifying. It's, it's Calvin, they're, 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 Calvin's they're, they're, literally Klaus, there. He works I mean, Rebecca, here. Do you know he's there because he's, he's a priest. Do you know Klaus? He's there, but... <laughs> Rebecca, Reed, do you know that Klaus Schwab, who is in his 80s, uh, is the head of this organisation, cannot be deposed. And in fact, he might not anoint his successor until he's dead by doing so through his will. And Amanda Patel, why do, are all of the world leaders so completely uh, enthralled because by I, Schwab? Uh, because it used, to be, it used to be taken quite seriously. It used to be an economic forum where you've got the greatest brains in the world and world leaders to come. Now it's become um, exactly what Matt says. I mean, uh, the, you know, the, the things you read, you know, it's described as globalist Glastonbury. Mm. It's like a gig where all these people, like-minded people, get together. There's something... And decide how to ruin our lives. There's 2,700 mm. leaders there. Um, there's, what, 52 heads of state. You know, just going through this, in last year they had... Um, over a thousand private jets fly in while they lecture us about um, yeah, getting yeah. rid of petrol. Um, they'd and tell us to stop eating meat. 7,400 metric tonnes of carbon dioxide were emitted. I don't even know what that means, but it's like a Godzilla carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. And they all get there, they all fly in by private jets, even if they're coming in from Europe. I mean, it's completely ludicrous, but it's the kind of language when you, when you, there was a, one chap that got in quite early and they've got um, the stalls for all these, all the billionaires who don't pay tax, all the billionaire companies. So you've got Microsoft, Amazon, Uber, Facebook, all those sorts of companies. Mm -hmm. They get there like in a political conference where you have people there who buy stalls to lobby the politicians. And yeah. that is all that and is. And that's what he that. basically guys, said, like piercing government. About, have you seen the stories about the 15 minute cities? Recently, no, in it, Oxford and Canterbury, and that. I think we should probably not revisit the Oxford one because I think this channel did not cover itself in glory on that topic. What on the uh, well? 
Yeah. What but, but you've heard of the 15-minute cities. This is one I of have, those, but we also this is one of the policies some, of the world. Some not, not fully accurate stuff was said about that, so I would think that it would be best not. The very to example of where they're, no, they're I, coming I, in I, and they're saying we're locking in we're locking down this city and we're not going to allow people to go in cars. You have to drive. You have to cycle. But that wasn't. But, but these are dictates. This is what Matt was was leading to. Is that yeah. this is one and of their Rebecca, great not, ideas? But it wasn't true about Oxford. But that is the creep to where it is heading. Was it true? It, it is the creep to where we. No, it wasn't true. That's a conspiracy lockdowns. theory, and it's really frustrating oh, because we old generally... Chestnut. Not the old conspiracy theory to shut down you know, a debate people, so you if, can't... If you, people you don't keep win telling a debate you, by going conspiracy theory. If people keep telling you that works. you have conspiracy theories, you may want to reflect on what I've never... Have I ever said conspiracy theory to anybody You just before? said it just now. No, just, apart from to you, <laughs> I've never said it to anybody else. Also, what, I'm on the only conspiracy theorist you've ever come across. On this channel, yes, absolutely, you are. Wow. There were there are a lot of conspiracy theories. The 15 Minute City is a conspiracy theory. No, the way that it was discussed, the Oxford specific issue was misreported and therefore not I don't think show. revisiting misreported. not on this show it wasn't I don't know what else you're referring to Rebecca but we had a debate about it on this show and we covered both sides of the argument and I believe that what's going on in Oxford is a creep and we're going to see more and more hard left councils try and start controlling where we can travel how we can travel how much we pay to travel and you can see it happening in London yeah. but look let's move on while he's keeping his eyes trained on the heinous British press the liberal US media that Prince Harry desperately wants to win over, continues to eviscerate him. So if the Duke of Woke wants to humiliate himself with Freudian admissions about Elizabeth Arden cream, I suppose that's his right. But his oversharing has now cheapened the legacy of Princess Diana, who didn't ask for any of this, and suddenly made his late mother fair game for the likes of talk show host Jimmy Kivel. Just take a look at this sketch in which Spare is reimagined as a truly grim fairy tale. It's called The Prince and the Penis, and it's, uh... At the chilly North Pole, a silly young codger took a walk in the snow and froze his wee todger. <laughs> oh, mummy, oh, mummy, he cried with a scream, and from then on a pie, she appeared with some cream. <laughs> My poor little prince, put this cream on your willy. It will lessen the ache and make it less chilly. <laughs> then he tucked it back in and back to her cloud. His mother went soaring and said this aloud. Should ever you have icy chills on your heart, un, just give it a rub with Elizabeth Arden. <laughs> How would he feel, I wonder, if someone like, hmm, uh, Jeremy Clarkson had done this instead of his <laughs> Hollywood mates? But, Rebecca Reed, we don't hear Prince Harry uh, coming out and issuing a statement condemning Jimmy Kimmel, do we? I mean, he must be upset about that. I didn't... I, I was, like, four when Princess Anna died, and I found that quite upsetting to watch. That was horrible. That yeah. was really, really but, distasteful. But Amanda Patel... It's Harry who has opened the door. He's to made this. he's made his mother fair game for any joke, any sat satirist, satirist, any horrible comic. There'll be there'll be so much that will spawn a whole pile of horrible stuff about Most Diana of the book. and a lot of anti-Diana yeah. stuff. And we've got to remember, I know you loved her, but a lot oh, of I people, love. a lot of people oh, disliked her. Yeah, but the point is, and there's no statement from Harry condemning that from Kimmel and must all of be the upset. US liberal politics, all of the US liberal comedians. But Matt, when it's Jeremy Clarkson, he wants to ruin his career. So this is all. I, I know you don't think this is a big story, but it's all political, and I actually think it's about freedom of speech, um, yeah, which there, they want to close there's down. There's definitely a, a, free, a freedom of speech issue, but there's also an issue of consistency, and I think that's what we're talking about here. If, yeah. you, if you're going to if you're going to have a go for somebody who's, who's done something. Then even if they're on yep. the other side and you're there, your mate and they've done the same thing, you've yep. got to you've got to treat look, them both the same. Mark my words, we will hear nothing from Harry and Meghan really about think? Jimmy Kimmel. We will hear nothing because he is part of their yeah. set, Rebecca. He's part of the Hollywood woke crowd. He's who they uh, have little cocktails with at Soho House. They are part of the same set. But look, maybe they have a private Matt conversation. Matt Letizia, Amanda <laughs> Patel, do stand by because coming up after falling victim to an X-rated prank. Could a bad night for the BBC and uh, be about to get a whole lot worse? <laughs> Find out if Gary Lineker and the Beeb's humiliation has earned them the dubious honour of being named tonight's Union Jackass. I'll play you what went down if you didn't see it, by the way, so stay tuned for that at 10.50. But first, our woke bosses at ITV about to follow Amazon by cancelling Jeremy Clarkson at the behest of Harry and Meghan. Fleet Street icon Calvin McKenzie gives his analysis. So you're not going to want to miss it. He's live with me in just two minutes' time.
every morning from six o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment, or your own news from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the Northwestern accents. <laughs> Whether you're with us on TV, radio, or online, every morning, it's breakfast from 6 a.m. Hope you can join us. We are GB News, right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really thoughtful. Come and join us on GB News, the People's News Channel. My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30 Monday to Friday on GB News. Join me, Nana Akwe, Saturday and Sunday afternoons on GB News. Expect fiery debate and passionate discussion as me and my panel tackle some of the biggest topics hitting the headlines. It's a place for everyone's opinion. No one gets cancelled, but no one gets an easy ride. <laughs> oh, she's on it, she's on it. Be ready for conversations that are fierce, frank, and of course, fun every Saturday and Sunday afternoon from 4 pm on GB News, the People's Channel. Time now for Uncancelled. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. Now, Jeremy Clarkson is fighting to save his career, with ITV giving worrying signals that they're about to bow to Meghan and the Sussex squad by axing the former Top Gear star, as Amazon has already done reportedly. Woke ITV bosses said they had no commitments to future editions of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, of course fronted by Clarkson, besides an outstanding contractually agreed series. And the recording of millionaire celebrity specials are said to have been suddenly pushed back last week due to scheduling issues, the famous scheduling issues. Sadly, whether he's dropped or not, Clarkson has seemingly accepted he will have to self-censor in the future, as he made clear in his apparently futile apology to the Sussexes, where he said, So can I move on now? Not sure. It's hard to be interesting and vigilant at the same time. You never hear pearls of laughter coming from a health and safety seminar, but I promise you this, I will try. And I have to say, that's the tyranny of the woke mob led by the pitchfork wavers in chief, Harry and Meghan. They won't rest until their victims have been totally humiliated and their livelihoods destroyed. Calvin McKenzie, the Fleet Street icon, joins me now. And... Calvin, look, uh, you've followed all of this closely over uh, the last couple of years now. It's hard for me to see ITV standing by Clarkson. They weren't prepared to stand by Piers Morgan. Uh, no, they won't stand by him. And actually, they never had any intention. When the story first broke, uh, LIGO made it very clear that uh, they were standing by him at the moment. So the reality is that he was always going to go. And I think. Honestly, I love what Clarkson does. I think his, his, his journalism is fantastic. His columns are great. The one at the Sunday Times is of a different level compared to anybody else in, in his game. But the problem, the mistake he made was he apologised. What was the point of apologising? It gave, it gave Harry and Meghan this open goal to reject it and actually make Clarkson's position much worse. The truth about the matter, the licensed media uh, all around the world are quite clear. They don't want Clarkson's. They, and actually, in a funny way, they don't want peers either. I mean, ITV is a shocking place. You know, they, look, their, heart, their share price has halved. Uh, their CEO has doubled our money while the share price has collapsed. And they throw out anybody who has any view which doesn't seem to comply with a sense of, let's give a round of applause 
uh, to uh, people who've buggered off to America uh, with, a, with a fond farewell. Honestly, they are sh at ITV complete shockers. And the truth about the matter is that Clarkson was an inspired choice for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, a completely clapped out format. Chris Tarrant did a fantastic job. Nothing. Then they, they put it into a, into a little cupboard, forgot about it. Along comes Clarkson, who takes the mickey out of the questions, takes the mickey out of the contestants. Suddenly, ratings go up. It, it's, it's genius. Now, I'm not saying that Clarkson's not a difficult piece of work. He is. But the whole point of being in the media is that you're probably quite a difficult piece of work. Dan, they might even say that about you. I know it's oh, fantastic. And it has been said about me. <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly. People like us, honestly, we're, we're pussycats. But the truth about the matter is that he is in a degree of trouble. Now, the, the, of course, the old lefties are all out there. So oh, it's all right for him. Thousand acre farm, 55 million in the bank. What does he care? What matters about this is if you start losing the Piers Morgans, the Clarksons of this world, all you're left with actually is the left. What makes me laugh. Good morning, Britain. They have a former Labour Chancellor yeah, sitting. Oh, uh, Labour Chief Secretary All of their Treasury, presenters sitting are on their wing. Asking questions. Can you imagine the equivalent, the Conservative equivalent sitting on there? It is impossible. The truth about the matter is that the, the media of the world is left-leaning. And why GB News' ratings are through the roof and, and something like Sky News, which has been around for 30 years, are basically only marginally ahead. The reason for that is that nobody serves the right and centre right. I mean, the debates you have are fantastic. That lady, I don't agree with a single word that that lady says, uh, who represents the kind of socialist, the left view. But, but you, but you also get read. the right view. Yeah, no, right. indeed. Uh, but, but I mean, what is chilling, though, about this, Calvin, is the influence that Harry and Meghan seem to have over Hollywood. It, it's, it's just absolutely insane, given actually America is meant to be the land of the free, home of the brave. They are the, the ones that, through their constitution, actually fundamentally believe in the freedom of the press. But actually, Harry, a member of the royal family, the, one of the most privileged blokes on earth, is trying to shut down journalism in Britain. And by the way, personally, I didn't like Clarkson's column, but absolutely, I think you should be allowed to make a mistake and not lose your voice and be censored forevermore. Well, what I've been surprised about this is how hard Clarkson has fought to stay uh, on the pedestal. Yeah, but it hasn't and worked. The, it hasn't worked. The, and, the reality, and the reality is the harder he's fought, the more difficult it's become for him. However, there will be, thank God for Rupert Murdoch, there will be Rupert Murdochs in the world who will stand up for him and say, yeah, OK, you made a bit of an error there, made a bit of a mishmash. Imagine the tens of hundreds of thousands of words he's written in his time, right, about, yes. you know, I think he said 5,000 columns, Calvin, and we all make mistakes. You have, I have. Yeah, no, in fact, I've made more than one. How about that? You know? <laughs> but anyway, so the bottom line on it is he is in a degree of difficulty. His talent will see him through. But actually, as you know, lots, lots of famous people want to be on TV. And I think if he's denied television, that will be a great shame. He is a great host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Fantastic on Top Gear, very funny in the farm, and Grand Tour was a big success as well. How many people in television do you know who've had multiple chances and have made multiple successes? The thing is, they don't like his politics. If he was on the left, if that was Owen Jones that was doing, doing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, he'd be there for a thousand years. Oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. CEO of ITV is a former chief executive of The Guardian. Oh, yeah. That's the reality. Oh, yeah. She's, she's on the left, absolutely. And, of course, we know that because Joe Brand, uh, who suggested my colleague Nigel Farage, uh, should be uh, have battery acid thrown over him, which is actually a violent crime, uh, she was promoted, basically, and got lots of big jobs after that. Uh, so we're going to see something very different happen, I think, with Jeremy Clarkson. But Calvin McKenzie, great analysis as ever. Thank you, Calvin. We will speak next week. But it's time now to reveal today's greatest Britain and union jackass. Amanda Platel, your GB nominee, please. It's uh, Andy Murray. He fought 
through five sets for five hours um, to get through the next round of the Australian Open. This is a guy who thought that he'd never play tennis again. True grit. He's absolutely fantastic. I love him. Matt Letizia, your nominee, please. Uh, my nominee is Fiona Hein, uh, who was the organiser behind the uh, 100K NHS protest last year, which helped to get the mandates rescinded. Uh, and she has also uh, organised a protest for this coming Saturday uh, to allow the vaccine injured in this country to have a voice. Great stuff. Rebecca Reid, your nominee. Uh, equally political, I've gone for Miley Cyrus, an honorary <laughs> choice. Um, I would seriously suggest watching the Flowers musical. It's a music video. It's amazing. Um, and just so much great gossip about her breakup. Oh, I did like the song. I haven't seen the video, oh, but there we so go. it's so good. You're going to love it. Getting a bit it. of a look at it. Uh, but I'm going to go with uh, Amanda Patel and Andy Murray, actually, because I love the fact that he just has grit and determination and uh, he... And a never steel hip. Amanda Patel, your <laughs> Union Jackass nominee. It's got to be giggling Gary Lineker, who's sitting there going, oh, I don't know what that sound is, I don't know what the sound is. It's the sound of a woman faking an orgasm, Gary. You should be used to that sound. Oh. <laughs> Line of the night from Amanda <laughs> Patel, I love that. Um, it... But this is what went down, by the way, in the BBC earlier. <laughs> We've an FA Cup winners only policy in the studio tonight. And I don't know who's making that noise, but so Alan Shearer is on the commentary gantry. The BBC have apologised for that uh, incident which went out on BBC One and said they're investigating tonight. Uh, Matt Letizia, you're not Union Jackass nominee. Is there any point after that? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, mine is uh, Klaus Schwab, uh, actually, uh, for being the uh, psychopathic leader of the World Economic Forum, who wants to make us all poorer and take us back to the Middle East. And sparked your big debate with Rebecca Reid tonight. I loved it. Uh, Rebecca Reid, your nominee? I mean, as, as, as Matt said, there's no point past Amanda, <laughs> but um, Jeremy Clarkson, because I feel like you should only apologise for things if you're really sorry, and I don't think the backhanded apologies do anybody any good. No, I, I sort of agree. I don't agree that he's the Union Jackass, but I do agree that he shouldn't have apologised. If you're not sorry, don't apologise. I think it has... Yeah, and it's backfired now, that's the point. But look, of course, it's got to be Amanda <laughs> Patel with that genius nomination. <laughs> humiliating moment for the BBC. Humiliating moment for Gary Lineker, now being investigated, of course. Uh, and there's a saboteur within the mix, because even though you've got this comic bloke claiming responsibility, how did he get to the studio? Who let him in? Uh, Wouldn't there's happen a lot... here, Dan, would it? <laughs> What's that? Wouldn't happen here. Oh, I'm sure it will happen you here. Wait. I'm you just wait. I'm waiting for the noises. <laughs> I'm waiting for the noises to come. Amanda Patel, Matt Letizia, Rebecca Reed, my fabulous superstar panel, thank you all so much. Thank you for your company tonight. I've really enjoyed it. And, of course, I'm back again tomorrow night from 9pm. Headliners is up next, though, with their irreverent take on the newspaper front pages. Thank you for your company. Good night. We are GB News, and we'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for bringing us your conversations, for helping our great nation find its voice. We are here for you on radio, television and online across England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. It's not the BBC, you know, you actually get your facts right. We are proud to be GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Monday to Thursday, 9pm till 11pm, join me, Dan Wooten. I'll bring you the sharpest takes and hottest debates. Do you okay. not believe in prisons? I, I don't believe in prisons. I'm completely right. stunned. I guarantee you there'll be no spin, no bias, no censorship. I actually was personally quite offended by it. <laughs> and no reason to go to bed. So I guess they've always been quite woke. That's Dan Wooten tonight on TV, radio and online. Monday to Thursday from 9pm till 11pm on GB News. The People's Channel, Britain's news channel. My name's Tom Harwood and join me 9.30am every weekday for The Briefing, your one-stop shop for everything you need to know about what's going on in politics today. I wonder if this is a deal that might need to be like the biscuits in this factory, twice baked. Is there not an opportunity here to win out against the extremes? Tom Harwood, GB News. What are you going to do about it? Things should have been done differently and they, and they certainly are being done differently. Don't miss it. The Briefing with me, Tom Harwood, 9.30, Monday to Friday on GB News.
Every morning from six o'clock, we'll wake you up with GB News Breakfast with all the stories you didn't know from the night before. So whether it's serious news, entertainment, or your own views from all over our great nation, we're here to kick off your day with a smile. And the national media should be reflecting and reporting what's happening here. You will notice the northwestern accents. <laughs> Whether you're with us on TV, radio or online, every morning it's breakfast from 6am. Hope you can join us. We are GB News right across the nation. You can get us on television, on radio, on digital. We're absolutely everywhere. Amazing! You see, amazing! You remind me of me and the European Parliament. <laughs> but here's the most important bit. We are not part of the mainstream establishment. We think and speak just like you do. We are the People's Channel. Magnificent. That's really, really...